everybody, it's Miss Hamill here, and I'm here to talk to you about DNA. This is the seventh EOC review video, and we're focusing on DNA. Your goals are to really describe and understand the makeup of DNA and RNA. You need to understand the process of DNA replication and the enzymes that are important in DNA replication. You need to understand the structure of DNA. You need to understand the relationship between DNA and RNA and identify the three types of RNA and their functions. You must describe how mRNA codons are translated into amino acids and summarize the process of protein synthesis. So first we're gonna compare DNA and RNA. So DNA is known as deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA is ribonucleic acid. The key difference in the names is the type of sugar. So DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid and the sugar is deoxyribose. RNA is ribonucleic acid and the sugar is ribose. DNA is a double strand, it's double helix, so it's two strands of DNA that are connected and twisted, giving it the double helix shape. The RNA is a single strand, and the DNA is going to be original. It's a complete instructions that stays inside the nucleus, it never leaves the nucleus, and the RNA is a copy of the instructions that the DNA has, and this instructions can leave the nucleus as mRNA. The, are, they're both made up of nucleotides, but the nucleotides are made up of a few different things. So for DNA, it's deoxyribose, sugar, phosphate, and there are four nitrogen bases. We have cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. For RNA, we have ribosugar, so the difference here, and we have phosphates and also four nitrogen bases. The difference in the bases are the uracil is replacing the thymine. So we have cytosine, guanine, adenine, and uracil for RNA. So the RNA is going to use the uracil when it copies the DNA, and then the uracil tells the nucleus that the RNA is trying to leave. Therefore, um, it's going to leave the nucleus with the instructions of the DNA because the DNA is not able to leave the nucleus of the cell. So here is a diagram of the structure of RNA and DNA. So our RNA is right here and our DNA is here. You can see the difference in the bases. We have C, G, A, and T for our DNA, and we have C, G, A, and U for our RNA, and the uracil and the thymine are the difference here in the nitrogen bases. Our DNA is going to be a double strand, and our RNA is a single strand. The backbone, or the structure that holds the nitrogen bases is made up of sugar and phosphate. The difference again is the sugar. DNA is deoxyribose sugar and RNA is ribose sugar. Then we have the, the bases and the DNA has base pairs. Now the base pairs we have cytosine always pairs with guanine adenine always pairs with thymine and it really has to do with the shape of the molecule so always always a a with t and c with g now where these bases pair together they're held together by hydrogen bonds Okay, so DNA replication is when the DNA copies itself when it's ready to divide so that the new daughter cells have the exact same DNA as the parent cell. And this is necessary so the new cell gets the identical copy and all the cells in the body know the instruction of how to function. So how this happens is we have a enzyme, an enzyme called helicase. And the helicase is to unwind and unzip 
the double helix. So it's going to break the bond, the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs. Then we have DNA polymerase, and it's going to come in and add the complementary pair, so A with T and C with G, to the old strand. So each of our new strands of DNA contain one original strand and one new strand. Then finally, the DNA is sealed up with an enzyme called DNA ligase. And again, this happens during the S phase of interphase before the cells divide. Protein synthesis is the process of taking the instructions of the DNA, changing it into RNA, then changing it into amino acids, which are linked together to form proteins. Now this happens in multiple steps. We have transcription and translation. So during transcription, this occurs in the nucleus, and we have our DNA, and the DNA is then transcribed into mRNA. So basically it's unzipped, and then we make our mRNA. So we have A with U, your cell, and C with G. Now the mRNA contains the message of the DNA, so it has the same instructions, but the mRNA is able to leave the nucleus. So the mRNA leaves the nucleus, then goes to the ribosome where translation will occur. So during translation, the ribosome is going to read the mRNA code and it's going to call for a matching amino acid. Now the tRNA is going to pick up segments of the mRNA and it's going to drop them off in the amino acid where then they are linked together, I'm sorry, drop them off in the ribosome where the amino acids are going to be linked together to form a polypeptide chain or a chain of amino acids. Then the polypeptide chain will go to the Golgi body where it is folded into a protein and then secreted by the cell either to be used within the cell or outside of the cell. So that is the basics of um, transcription and translation. So transcription is taking DNA and making mRNA, and translation is taking mRNA, making amino acids, and the amino acids will make our proteins. And this again happens at our ribosome. So this is a little blurry, but these are our three main types of RNA. We have the messenger RNA, which contains the message of the DNA. Again, it's A, C, G, and U. So A pairs with U. Then we have our ribosomal RNA, and this is basically a component of our ribosome. So it's a a protein basically that is made um, to form ribosomes and it's made to form our amino acids. Then we have our transfer RNA and our transfer RNA whoops, is going to pick up our, um, our codon, so our sets of three pieces of mRNA that codes for an amino acid and drop it off in the ribosome to be made into a protein. So how does the cell know which amino acids to bring in? Well, they are written as like a secret code. And the secret code is made up in sets of three. And those sets of threes are called codons. So the ribosome is going to read the codons and it's going to bring in a matching amino acid. So for example, if we have a strand of DNA that reads A, G, G, C, 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 T, A, G. Our RNA, our complementary RNA would read A, U, C, C, G, 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 A, U, C. So again, A pairs with U, G with C. And then we would go over to our amino acid table to try to figure out what amino acid the RNA is coding for. 
So we have UCC. So this is the first base in the codon. So we know that it is in this row. Then we have C, we know that it's in this column. And then C, serine. So this one is easy, they're all serine in this, this block. Then we have G, G, G. So G, 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 we have G-L-Y. And then we have A, U, C, A, this row, U, this column, C, we have I-L-E. Now, all proteins are going to begin with a start codon, which is M-E-T, M-E-T here. So A, U, G, and all proteins are going to end with a stop codon. So either U, A, A, U, A, G, whoops, or U, G, A. And this just tells the amino acids to stop, um, stop coding. Then we are going to talk about biotechnology. And biotechnology is basically using um, living things in order to produce a new tool or some type of technology that can enhance our, our lives. So DNA fingerprints are going to be used for figuring out a crime scene, a paternal testing. Um, it can help us find missing persons, etc. So basically what happens, it's using gel electrophoresis, which is using pieces of DNA being pushed through a gel, um, usually agar, using electricity. And the pieces of DNA are then moved along the gel based on their size. And then from that, you can determine who the DNA belongs to based on the sample. So here we have our sample of, oh my goodness, sample of semen. So then we have, whoops, I gave away the answer. Then we have, geez, <laughs> then we have our two um, suspects. So we have Chris and we have Randall. So the way we figure out who the, the person that the DNA matches is you just match up the bands. So the person has to have the same bands here. And you can see that Randall and the sample are the same. So Randall is the criminal or the missing person, whatever that we're looking for. And then genetic engineering is going to be the basically using DNA from one organism and putting it into another organism. This can be used for cloning. So basically what we do is we cut um, pieces of human DNA or whatever organism that we're, we're using to remove that desired trait. And then we're going to put it into bacterial DNA and then reinsert the bacteria and then it will produce that desired trait. This is called recombinant DNA, and this is really important in making drugs um, and making genetically modified food and curing diseases. So with the biotechnology, we can advance um, and learn a lot of things and produce a lot of really cool and important technologies that may help save a lot of people. So that is your slideshow about DNA. I hope it helps, and I wish you the best of luck studying and have fun. Okay.